hello, hello everybody, this is Rusaku here in Tokyo, welcome back. And uh, today I got a couple of updates that I wanted to show you guys, just stuff that I'm working on. First of all, the trigger. Um, I Somebody asked me if there was an option to put it on the hot shoe adapter. I didn't decide to make it a hot shoe adapter, I, I put a, a Velcro uh, on this side of the camera, just because, um, <laughs> you know, people use the trigger you know put some trigger in there stuff like that but some people doesn't have a trigger some people just use like natural and want to do out outdoors and yeah i can see myself doing that because not every time i do a photo shoot i do it out uh, you know with triggers and flashes and stuff so i decided to make another cover and this cover obviously is just the top part of it it doesn't affect the actual inside so, so you don't have to like modify anything just take the cover out and put the other cover and it basically just will fit in here now uh <laughs> It's a little bit, um, well, you can put it supposedly in any way, but um, the guy who asked me to design this thing, he asked me to put the output of the trigger, the cable where you connect it this way towards the lens. So that's how I did it. And you switch it up from the bottom and you can you still have some space to move this thing under it. So you, you can see I can still put my finger here and it doesn't affect the trigger. It's not super stiff in there, uh, but yeah, it will, it will not fall if you like tap it or whatever. So yeah, you can turn it on like that and it will actually trigger the camera. Uh, somebody was asking where to connect it. So yeah, it goes here. In my case, I have a digital back, but it doesn't have to do anything with the digital back. In fact, I can take out the digital back and it will still trigger the camera. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't have to do anything with the digital back. It just needs the connector down here and uh, looking at it from the front and the right bottom side of the lens. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the things. Um, of course, I'm not gonna be selling this stuff because it's just a piece of plastic. So I was thinking um, maybe if uh, whoever is gonna order from now on, you can ask me if you want this bottom part or you want just a normal one. So you can put with the Velcro or whatever. Some people doesn't want to put stuff on their camera, like I have this sticker and whatever there. Um, so I wanted to show you guys how it kind of looks like right now. And here it is. So this is the project that I have. This is a 3D uh, designing tool that I use and here's how it looks. Basically, it's just a hot shoe mount adapter. It's not a big deal, right? But if it doesn't come, you know, it's it's easier for everybody if it has it. And this thing is, is perfectly uh, even, so you can you can pretty much mount it at any way that you want. It is, it's perfectly sized and it will fall there and doesn't affect the, the size or anything like that. On this model, you can see holes because this is actually how I actually uh, Print it because I will um, I can separate the bodies over here as you can see I can take the top off and this is the bottom part that I that I redesigned well basically I just put this extension back here so that's pretty much how it is now I've been working also in uh, making uh, masks for the viewfinder so I grabbed this uh, pictures is down here it's just a basic picture the of the of the normal mask right the 645 mask. I grabbed that thing. I put, I uh, measured the centers and everything, so all the all the coordinates will be like right in the middle of this thing. You can see the origin of this thing. These three color things over here are right in the middle. So basically, everything that I, every mask that I design will be stuck in here. And the size, as you can see, is not the same uh, length because this mask is designed to be on top of the camera, and uh, I can make it at any size right now. So this is for the 645 and I can just change the sides of these edges over here. Now one thing of the mask that um, phase one and stuff does has a like, like a little like line over here, like a little stitch line over here. And you can actually feel better where the ending is. If it's like this, you have to like, just like guesstimate where the line will be when you're shooting a portrait on landscape mode. But yeah, I think this is, this is pretty useful. And I have over here in my designs tool, uh, I have pretty much every other mask that somebody has asked me. So I have the 6x6, six six, I have the Apsu 75, the 65 Plus and stuff like that. So all this stuff, it's actually right here on this page in there. So as you can see, it's, uh, I have, uh, there's, this is Thingiverse. This is uh, for, you know, not everybody will know it, but this website over here, it's, um, basically uh, a place where people d upload things that you can download for free and these are 3d models as you can see this one over here this one's this five i had just uploaded today and um, and basically you just like click on it and just click download files and you could we will get an o, o uh, what's it called obj obj file 
and uh, with that OBJ file you can send it to your 3D printer and print it and, and like it's right here I think this is even better than I was going to show you so this is how it looks on the top of the camera and as you can see it's actually pretty fit there because I made it one millimeter tall so it actually fits between the camera and the, the glass and the border of the glass because it does have a, a little dent so it's like perfectly in there and I just put like some little very very skinny uh, double sided tape and I just like squish it in there. This is for my, uh, no, this is for the 140, the IQ 140, or the Credo 140. All the uh, all the 40 uh, megapixel digital backs will be this exactly the same size. So if you're using the P40 or the Aptus, what is it, the 12 or 10 or whatever, anything that is 40 megapixels is the same size. The sensor doesn't change. Uh, so yeah, and I made this cut up over here. Now, on some of the designs where the with the sensor at larger, like the 645 and stuff like that, I had to cut this a little bit lower. You will still see the lights over here, but you will not see um, those icons so clear. So, uh, you know, for the people who need to see the icons, maybe it's not going to be so enough because I didn't have much space over here and I didn't want it to cut it so short because, you know, it will be like... Now, uh, I do wanted to show you guys something and let me go ahead and return over here to the webcam. I wanted to show you guys something because on this camera, um, and I mentioned in every single page over here, uh, I put a, a little like warning over here to not put the, the, the viewfinder open when it's direct sunlight. So if you have like the viewfinder like this, right? It's open and you have this thing over here, right? You pull out this lens like that, right? And if the sun is hitting this thing, it will create a beam of light, you know, like the you know the people the, the bad kids that killed ants and whatever with the with the beam of light that you can heat up and like burn stuff. These lens will create that. It will it will in and the actual focal point is exactly at the line of this uh, of this glass. So basically, the beam of light, whatever light it comes, it will, it will like focus into there. So let me go ahead and take this guy out and show you what can happen. <laughs> if you uh, leave it like that so you can see how the light was like burning that part over there and it's not is that just one time that happened it happens a couple times so there's another one over there so this plastic will melt with the sound if it's like hitting it directly you can see like right right there that's does the melting of the sun and uh let me show you guys how i put it in because you see it doesn't fall out so all i did was really really it's just a little skinny piece of double side tape so just like put it right there in the corners I mean if I'm gonna be using the digital back I'm, I don't need those corners anyway so uh, yeah I decided just to take it out if I need to use film then I will just like take it off and whatever I can see I can see the parts again anyways it's in the corners and the corners are usually not used so I'm not really bothered for that so there is that and uh, yeah if you guys need another um, mask you can totally just like let me know and uh, I can just design it and upload it to the same website. The link is going to be there forever. So if you want, you can just like, uh, I don't know, like uh, favorite the page or whatever. Follow me if you have an account there. It's free. You can just download any 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 size that you need or you can ask me and it doesn't cost me anything. I mean, I just I just put another number and I create another form. So it's actually pretty easy for me to do this. And now let me show you guys. Um, if you don't have a 3D printer, right? Uh, although this one over here is, is two hundred dollars, it's really cheap and it's amazing. I've been doing my 3D prints and every I've been doing a lot of stuff, pretty printed stuff, and it's amazing. Uh, one roll of film is like one kilo kilogram of uh, plastic. It prints so much, and it costs like fifteen twenty bucks or whatever. So you can get a lot of prints done with just twenty dollars. So it's way better sometimes than, than buying anything. Um, but if you don't have a use or you don't think you have a use for it, um, I know there's some places where they have like uh, libraries, public libraries, they do have like printing services. Maybe you have a friend or whatever. If anything goes bad and you live like in a place where there's no access to anything like that, um, let me show you guys a website. One of the websites, if you're in the States or whatever, is called uh, Shapeways. So here is a website. It's called Shapeways, and basically they will 3D print anything that you want, um, in pretty much anything. Like seriously, they don't use this type of extruder 3D printers like the one that I have. They use like more uh, sophisticated ones. And as you can see, you can print stuff like 
on all kinds of materials like carbon fiber and like gold and I mean I'm not even joking like and all you have to do is like upload a 3d model right so you click upload a 3d model uh, let me go ahead and sign in with my Facebook so there we go I'm signing in with my Facebook account and all you can do is like uh, just drag your 3d model so basically I you just download the OBJ file and I have it on this desk over here so here is my file you just drop it in there boom and it's gonna upload and it will like show spinning over here it's really cute it's loading it up and uh, there we go so that's the that's the mask right now and uh, you can actually spin it if you want to see it or whatever just playing around here but then you have all these materials and stuff like that you can play with you look at that platinum if I want to make this little piece on platinum it's gonna cost me two thousand dollars you can have silver gold and other stuff but of course you would just go for like the basic one right so uh, the versatile plastic I'm not sure what exactly that means do uh, you have like all the uh, option over here and I would not go for white I would definitely go for black or unless you want to black white if you don't want those pay those 250 and just paint it black yourself it's it's just a piece of plastic so it doesn't matter and uh, yeah you, you basically just print that you don't need to be sturdy you don't need to be like holding temperatures and these and that so as long as you get this piece over here it's fine obviously if you have a, like a laser cut and or you have a CNC machine or whatever you want to like made it out of aluminum or whatever you can totally do that uh, the measures are exactly uh, perfect for the camera uh, let me know if there is an error with this with this part over here because I just like guesstimated over here but it should be all fine and dandy there so yeah you see over here it costs five dollars over here um, but they do charge you some shipping depending on the country that you are if I ship it all the way to Japan it was gonna cost me like twenty seven dollars just for shipping uh, plus the five of oh, plus the five dollars for uh, printing it so for this cheap material white and uh, so it will be like like thirty four dollars to get this print done so yeah um anyway if I'm gonna print it to send it to somebody else it's gonna cost me at least 20 bucks to send it so yeah like if you can get it on, on your near you or whatever or if there's another website that you know actually on this thingiverse you can actually uh, I think there's an option to order this thing somewhere uh, I haven't seen it but yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure there's an option to order uh, from here you can just like click on up here and there and yeah look this website will have always my my latest things and if I decide to release the the actual trigger back which I was thinking uh, because you know you maybe have access to a better 3d printer that I have and the picture would be you know the 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 design would look more smooth most most like like right now like it's right here because uh, my 3d prints do not come like smooth and sharp like this you can obviously sand it and paint it and whatever but if you order it in, in like shape ways or whatever this this same piece it will come like perfectly uh, smooth or whatever like they do some finishing stuff for extra money and um, yeah all you needed to do was I, I just put this cover over here this hole up here I cover it with hot glue that's that's all I do uh, so the light uh, underneath can shine and uh, and yeah this is just fitting in so it's not even a big deal to to put those things in but anyway I, I'm thinking just to put like the bottom part over here so you guys can print it and uh, stick it in your and your triggers if you already have them if not what are you waiting for <laughs> like this is a really good thing to have it works with Android and iPhone already so yeah um, that's pretty much all for it right now and I'm sorry I keep talking a lot as usual so um, thank you guys for watching and see you guys in an update uh, you guys can ask me anything I'm here for you guys I uh, keep thinking and making the tutorials for the digital bag but I'm still not sure how I'm gonna present it because most of the manuals official manuals for the digital bag are meant for the 645 cameras so I'm not sure how I'm gonna try to like align that with this because uh, it doesn't it's not I don't even have the pro 2d so I cannot show you all the features that the digital back can do I can just show you like the basic stuff like how it turn it on connected or batteries or how much it lasts or how much memory should take for this 80 megapixel back but yeah so yeah if you got any questions let me know see you guys soon bye bye